The story begins with students discussing the rumored transfer student, Haim Shiraki, and reacting to her presence as she sits there, looking super cute. Female students warn them not to stare at her, but Haim is fine when the two female students protect and squeeze her. Meanwhile, the male students cheer for her, calling her an angel. Haim pretends to act herself, and many people tell her that she has been cute since birth. A few people tease her, saying that her dream is to gain money and status by marrying a billionaire. Despite this, she continues working on making the cutest face. A female student tells her that several people have already confessed their feelings to Haim, and she worries that she might end up with someone undesirable. Haim thinks about how she turned them down without even knowing them, and as a result, the male students create a pact called, Never Confess Our Love to Shiraki-san. Haim has never shown them her true self, and a female student points out that she is just like a character in a shoujo manga. Haim wonders if she would like to be like that character. After school, as Haim is leaving, she dreams about finding a billionaire and becoming an angel. However, she accidentally bumps into Mai, who is in a hurry and doesn't recognize her. Haim trips Mai and unintentionally appears like an angel to the people nearby. Without thinking, Haim tries to leave, but Mai suddenly experiences pain in her right hand from the fall and realizes she needs to head to work. When Sumika arrives and expresses concern for Mai, Haim thinks that Sumika could pass for a Gyaru. Sumika playfully uses a Kibetan pose on Haim, which makes her look like a delinquent in Haim's opinion. Mai comes up with a plan for Haim to help with part of her job, and Sumika reacts to Haim's cute face. Mai grabs Haim, knowing they have no time to waste. Haim wonders if she is suitable for the job and admits that she has never even heard of it. As they head to the second floor for their job, Sumika catches up and Mai insists that Haim join them. Haim enters the cafe and notices that it looks like a typical cafe, but it isn't open yet, and there are no guests at the moment. Mai welcomes her to Café Lead, and Haim steps inside. She thinks that it seems like a regular job. Mai instructs her to get the uniform ready but doesn't realize Haim's name. Haim moves to the dining area and spots a girl with long hair named Mitsuki. Haim decides to act like an angel and help out at the cafe for the day. Just as Haim is about to change into her uniform, Mai calls her name. Mitsuki warmly greets Haim, and Haim is reminded of a character from a shoujo manga. Mai is aware that Mitsuki is a kind and wonderful senior. Haim believes that their uniforms resemble those from a girl's private school in a manga called Café Lieb Girls Academy. Mai hands Haim her uniform and other items, but Haim puts the uniform down as she suddenly feels a pang in her stomach. Mai's right hand starts hurting again, and she needs to quickly go to the hospital. Before Haim has a chance to try on the uniform, Mai provides her with some basic information, mentioning that there is a mission school situated on top of a hill. Mai also decides on Haim's surname, suggesting she use Shirasagi. Haim doesn't fully comprehend the nature of the job, as it seems reminiscent of a shoujo manga. Mitsuki advises Sumika not to get lost in her books again and reminds her that they have a responsibility to serve the customers in the salon. Mitsuki expresses her wish for Sumika to act more diligently. Sumika playfully grabs Mitsuki's right hand to indicate another motive, implying that Mitsuki shouldn't be left alone. The customers cheer in response. Haim panics for them and feels like she's in a scene from a shoujo manga. Mitsuki asks Sumika if she intends to remain lazy, but Haim realizes that nobody actually follows a shoujo manga script. Reacting quickly, Haim considers herself an employee since Sumika shouldn't do all the work alone. Sumika uses a Kibetan pose on Haim while she's sneaking around, causing Haim to realize that Sumika isn't a Gyaru. Sumika teasingly provokes Mitsuki again, making her feel envious, resulting in another round of cheers from the customers. A female customer approaches Haim and asks if she is a new employee. Haim introduces herself but hesitates, wondering if her cuteness is solely for her dream. Nene, who is unaware of Haim's recruitment, places a teacup on table 10, and Haim takes the initiative to attend to it. A male customer asks Haim to introduce herself, but she feels a bit shy and struggles to do so. Mitsuki encourages Haim to try her best to handle it. Haim gazes at the customer as he mentions her, wondering what he means. Mitsuki wonders if Haim is simply nervous, but Haim realizes she hasn't done anything wrong. She decides to give a dazzling performance and finally introduces herself to all the customers. Mitsuki congratulates Haim on doing a fantastic job. Two customers inquire about Mitsuki's relationship with Haim, praising her as a nice senpai. Haim refers to Mitsuki as Oni-sama, to express gratitude for her kindness, and Mitsuki notices this gesture. As the night approaches and customers begin to leave before closing time, Sumika embraces Haim to commend her for a job well done. They plan to tidy up before heading home. Haim reflects on Sumika's gesture and realizes that the job doesn't seem strange anymore. She acknowledges that she was able to get through the day thanks to Sumika's support. Mitsuki advises Haim not to refer to her as Oni-sama, due to it being bothersome. 
but she notes that the place has its own set of rules. Haim is shocked to learn this and ponders their dynamics, realizing that Mitsuki has a genuine personality. Mai returns after a lengthy visit to the hospital. Haim hadn't recognized Mai as the manager. Mai shows her injured hand, wrapped in a triangular bandage, and mentions that they will be seeing each other for quite some time. However, she expresses hope that Haim can fill in for her, and once again, greets her. The next day, Kanoko asks Haim if she has heard about a part-time job opportunity, but Haim explains that she is involved in club activities and her job is at a cafe. Haim feels that she had no other choice due to certain circumstances and couldn't refuse the job. She assures Kanoko that she hasn't hidden anything from her and that she isn't being deceived by bad people, but she finds it a bit difficult to explain the nature of the job. Kanoko forgets to mention that Haim's appearance is cute, which adds to Haim's worries as she can't clarify the situation to her. After school, Haim reflects on the strange job she has and how hard it is to explain to Kanoko. As Haim opens the door, she is greeted by the three employees. Mai mentions that they have an employee-only back door and their customary greeting is, good day to you. Haim attempts to greet Mitsuki but inadvertently uses Oni-sama to address her. Mai is aware that Haim refers to Mitsuki as Oni-sama in front of the customers. Haim plans to use the term, Schwestern, for the employees at Café Lieb. The term is inspired by the, A Maiden's Heart, series and reflects the theme of the café. Schwester, means, sister, in German. Haim learns more about the tradition of exchanging crews, meaning, crosses, as a symbol of sisterhood and how they lead their lives according to this tradition. This practice is deeply rooted in the traditions of Lieb Girls Academy. In this relationship, the older sister may say, your tie is crooked, and then straighten it for the younger sister, who responds with gratitude, saying, thank you very much, Oni-sama. Mitsuki had already mentioned this yesterday. Mai uses a computer to check online comments and reads customer reviews. As Haim ponders the reason behind Mitsuki's anger, she realizes that they could resolve the issue by pairing themselves as sisters. Mai suggests that they should make their own decision in this matter and leaves the crews in their hands. However, Mitsuki cannot accept this proposal, considering that Haim just arrived yesterday and she doesn't believe Haim is suitable to be a Schwester. Mitsuki expresses uncertainty about whether Haim will conduct herself properly in the salon. Mai explains to Haim, who addresses her as Oni-sama, that she had only seen Mitsuki for the first time yesterday in the dining area and had perceived her as a gentle older sister. Mitsuki declares that she doesn't want to pair with someone who will only cause trouble, and she has no intention of covering for Haim. Dressed in her Lieb girl's uniform, Haim prepares herself for the job ahead. She recalls a time in the past when her classmates accused her of lying and expressed disbelief that anyone would choose her. Meanwhile, Mitsuki waits alone in the dining area, appearing lost in her thoughts. Sumika observes Mitsuki's demeanor and senses that something is bothering her, but Mitsuki avoids making eye contact with anyone. Sumika decides to playfully interact with her, causing the customers to cheer. As the job begins, Haim starts to imitate Mitsuki. Mitsuki has a junior, Kahai, and looks towards Haim implying that Haim should choose her. Haim tries her best not to make any mistakes, even closing her eyes to focus. Her voice becomes softer, and a customer assumes Ayanokoji, Haim, is avoiding a question. Haim believes that her cuteness is coming across to the customers. Mitsuki desires for Haim to conduct herself with more composure and hopes that they will be recognized as a pair of cute seniors and juniors. Haim gazes at her crews and musters the courage to ask if Mitsuki would accept it. However, the customers misinterpret the situation and believe that the offer of becoming Schwestern has already been turned down. Mitsuki questions Haim, suggesting that she might be misremembering or misunderstanding the handling of the crews. Haim interprets Mitsuki's response as acceptance and deduces that Mitsuki wants her to become a Schwester. Mitsuki properly ties Haim's crews, and the customers cheer once again. Haim and the others officially become Schwestern. In a whispered comment, Mitsuki expresses her dislike for being called Oni-sama leaving Haim in a panic and struggling to understand her intentions. At Kichioji Station, Haim begins to polish her facade once again and thanks Kanoko for hanging out. Kanoko ended up buying some items, and the cosmetics she purchased seemed to be of good quality for the price. Haim checks her phone and realizes it's almost time for her part-time job, so she hurriedly rushes off. Kanoko reminds her not to forget to get drinks. Mai emphasizes an important rule for Haim to remember to maintain her composed demeanor and keep their true identities a secret from those around them. Maintaining the illusion of their academy is crucial to avoiding complications in real life. If Haim's real school friends were to find out about this job, it could potentially disrupt everything. Mai wants Haim to be discreet about her work and keep it low-key. Haim assures Mai that she will handle it with caution, considering how she will inform Kanoko about her part-time job. 
Kanoko's classmates mention that they attended the same middle school as Haim and try to reminisce about those times. However, Haim is modest and reluctant to share any details with them, so Kanoko remains unresponsive. Eventually, Haim approaches Kanoko, and it becomes clear that she hasn't changed much since their middle school days. Kanoko expresses disappointment at not having any pictures of Haim from that time, but Haim promises to bring them next time, which excites her classmates. After school, Haim talks to Kanoko but finds it challenging to speak up on her own. Similarly, Kanoko struggles to express herself, becoming nervous and unable to imitate Haim's behavior. Haim attempts to compliment Kanoko by calling her cute, but she can't bring herself to say it. Kanoko informs Haim about her new part-time job, which surprises Haim, and they make plans to go together. However, after parting ways, Kanoko fails to call Haim cute. Instead, she checks her phone and shows Haim pictures, making herself feel better. During her job, Haim greets the customers, and Mitsuki takes the opportunity to teach her how to hold the tray with just one hand. However, Haim doesn't seem comfortable with the idea, as she believes it's customary to use both hands to hold the tray. Mitsuki affectionately calls her Oni-sama, but Haim refuses to refer to Mitsuki as an employee, considering them strangers. Mitsuki playfully whispers to Haim as if she were her little sister whenever Haim addresses her as Oni-sama. Haim appreciates Mitsuki's kindness and notices how customers react positively to their interaction. Feeling tired, Haim reflects on how Mitsuki is difficult to understand and still doesn't grasp the concept of Shestern. She wonders if she can pull off acting like a cute student as Mitsuki suggests. As Haim opens the door, she realizes it's already closed, and to her surprise, she sees Kanoko, a classmate from her school, waiting for her. Mai, always mindful of an important rule, handles the situation. She acts as if she's meeting Kanoko for the first time, saying things like, Oh, this is the first time I've met you, and, I see, so you have a friend who looks just like me. Kanoko becomes suspicious of the cafe, as Haim never mentioned anything about it. Although Haim doesn't recognize her, Kanoko still uses her surname from Lieb Girls Academy. This depresses Kanoko, and Haim starts acting distant, almost like a stranger. Mitsuki takes it upon herself to address the situation, leaving Kanoko and attending to Haim. She teaches Haim once again how to hold the tray with one hand, and Haim continues her duties on her own. Sumika requests that Kanoko refrains from referring to students from their school, as Haim and Mitsuki share a special relationship based on a vow of sisterhood. Mitsuki tries not to be dismissive of Kanoko, considering them sisters, and whispers something to Haim. This causes Kanoko to panic, and she mistakenly splashes water on her own face. They forgive her once the water dries, and Sumika escorts her to the office to clean her clothes promptly. Mai approaches Kanoko and apologizes for the incident with their staff, offering her a change of clothes and expressing that she didn't get angry at Haim to avoid causing any misunderstandings. Mai understands Haim's importance to Kanoko and sees herself as someone who can help Haim. Haim acknowledges that she's at fault for Kanoko's current state, and Mitsuki also feels the need to apologize. Mitsuki had already recognized Kanoko as a visitor. Mai introduces Kanoko as Kanoko Mamiya, and the uniform suits her, although she feels a bit embarrassed wearing it. Haim compliments Kanoko and apologizes once again for the water incident, which causes Kanoko to blush. Mai decides to consider their conversation. The following day, Kanoko is left alone in the classroom after school. Haim contemplates explaining to the others that Kanoko visited the cafe yesterday and expresses surprise at how cute Kanoko looks. She considers leaving everything to Kanoko, but she realizes she can't simply abandon her. Haim is shocked when Mai tells her about an interview with Kanoko. Kanoko had approached Mai earlier and listened attentively, showing no signs of discomfort. Haim wants to express her feelings, but before she can, Kanoko speaks up loudly and passionately. Kanoko starts working that day and, as part of the cafe's setting, will use her academy surname, Amamiya, instead of her real surname. She's a first year like Haim, and Mai insists that Haim should thank her. There's a lot of work, but Kanoko is determined to help Haim. Haim initially thought she was the one being blackmailed, but now Mai refers to them as Senpei. Kanoko is aware of the close relationship between Haim and Mitsuki, known as Shwestern, and she herself was immediately chosen as one, with Ayano Koji as her Senpei. Haim acknowledges that Mitsuki can be strict but also sees her as a kind of Oni-sama. Mitsuki becomes upset with Mai for not covering for everything she does, while Mai fears she'll make another mess. Mai suggests they get some field practice in the salon and assigns them the task of taking orders. Mitsuki begins taking an order at the salon. If a customer expresses a preference for something warm to drink, Mitsuki might recommend the Assam, Salon, or Earl Grey tea, or suggest the Heist Chocolate. When a customer expresses interest in them, Mitsuki takes their order. She then prompts Haim to try it as well, but Haim accidentally refers to Mitsuki as Oni-sama. 
Haim serves the customer, keeping in mind the academy's setting, and addresses them as Yamada-sama, putting on a dazzling performance. The next task is taking orders, but Haim accidentally bites her tongue, and the customers find it cute. Haim feels tired, but Mitsuki encourages her to keep going and gives her a stern look. Yamada has already decided to order salon tea, and Kanoko passes the order slip to Mitsuki. Haim's performance worsens when she loses to a fellow first year, and Mitsuki had expected her to be more skilled. Sumika performs well, and Mitsuki advises her not to spoil Amamiya, referring to Kanoko. Mitsuki teasingly mocks Haim, and they start playfully arguing. Kanoko intervenes and holds Haim back, suggesting they avoid escalating the situation. Kanoko proposes practicing serving together, and Haim decides to take on the role of a clumsy character. The customers find them endearing, and Haim resolves to work hard with Kanoko, though she might still make some minor mistakes and give the wrong impression. Haim is determined not to lose and attempts to take the customer's orders, which include Thuringer Bratwurst, Kartoffel Salat, Zeller Weisse Katz QBA, and Noctish for dessert. However, Haim doesn't understand the German names, and the customers also request three glasses of Sackertort for dessert. The customers notice their interactions from before, and Haim's classmates cheer her on. Haim strives to do her best at serving, but the customers become frustrated when she struggles to communicate with them. Kanoko steps in to take their orders, managing to engage the customers with her dazzling performance. Kanoko introduces herself, and the customers react positively to her. Mitsuki asks Haim if she has taken the orders, prompting Haim to pass the order slip to her. Mitsuki goes to the kitchen briefly with Haim. Mitsuki selects a new order slip and copies the orders onto it. Haim had only managed to write down a few words, so Mitsuki rewrites the entire list. Haim explains that she often makes mistakes, and Mitsuki clarifies that she doesn't want to cover up Haim's failures. Despite this, Haim expresses her gratitude to Mitsuki for helping her. Kanoko enters the scene and gazes at them, asking if Haim had any issues with the previous order and what they are doing. Kanoko wants Haim to improve and not become a burden to her senpai. Haim explains that Mitsuki helped her out of kindness, and Mitsuki clarifies that she helped Haim because they are like sisters, emphasizing that it's not Haim's fault. Kanoko resolves to try her best to do her job without relying on Mitsuki, and Mitsuki assures Haim that it's not her fault for not being able to take orders by herself. They decide to work together, causing Haim to panic. In the salon at Café Lieb, Mitsuki placed an order for table number 5 and passed it to Haim. Haim called Nene to take the order in the kitchen but mistakenly referred to it as number 6 instead of the correct number, which is 5. It seemed like number 6 had already been ordered for that same table, so Haim reminded Nene that it should be number 5. Mitsuki sternly instructed Haim to double-check the order after copying it and to abbreviate the menu names on the slip, but Haim couldn't grasp anything from the instructions. At school, the students urged her to join their clubs, but Haim wasn't skilled in physical activities and wasn't interested in joining any clubs. They suggested she join as a trial member or simply observe, but Haim had already declined similar offers from other clubs. They were left with no choice. Haim was grateful that her senpai asked her to join their club and wished them good luck with their recruitment. The students promised to do their best for their club. Haim's classmates expressed their desire for her to join their club, but she had already been invited by another club. They wanted her to join as soon as possible. Haim glanced at them, imagining how they would react if she confidently walked by without glancing back. After school, Haim continued to complain about her Oni Sama who kept nagging at her, and she headed to Café Lieb. She glanced at her reflection in the mirror, admiring her perfect facade. Mai inquired about the opening time, and Haim was prepared for her job. She asked Kanoko if she was done changing, but Kanoko hadn't changed yet, so Haim decided to go ahead. She was determined to show Kanoko that her facade was unbeatable. When the cafe opened, Haim served the customers, providing them with towels and iced water. They discussed the possibility of becoming Schwestern with Mitsuki. A male customer wanted to place an order, and Haim asked him to speak slowly so she could understand and take the order accurately, and the customers cheered her on. Haim asked if Mitsuki had been watching them, but Mitsuki didn't respond. Haim excelled at her role as a server and glanced at Mitsuki, ensuring she was performing her job properly. Sumika, who spoke like a Gyaru and was a third-year student, left the salon to them. Haim stared at Sumika disapprovingly, as she didn't particularly like the Gyaru style. Mitsuki told Sumika not to sit around and read too much, but Sumika insisted she was just in the mood for reading that day. Haim thought the conversation had suddenly shifted. She mentioned needing her Oni-sama to handle Tachibana's part as well and expressed her willingness to play the role of Mitsuki's little sister, emphasizing the need for a calmer approach, as advised by Mitsuki. Mitsuki wanted Haim to reflect on her performance and praised herself when she did a good job. Mitsuki playfully squeezed Haim's chest, surprising her, and Haim blushed, pointing at Mitsuki's chest. 
Haim believed her own cuteness could surpass that of her Oni-sama, which had its own impact, and concluded that Mitsuki wouldn't nag at her anymore. After finishing their work, Mitsuki approached Haim at the salon and made her worry that Haim would make another mistake. Haim desired to get along with Mitsuki, but Sumika intervened to distract from Haim's embarrassment. Sumika emphasized that being spoiled was part of Haim's role as Mitsuki's little sister. However, Mitsuki mistakenly believed that Sumika was spoiling Haim and expressed concern that Haim would make another slip up. Sumika assured Mitsuki that Haim hadn't made any mistakes, but Mitsuki didn't praise her. Kanoko approached Haim and surprised her because Haim hadn't realized Kanoko was there. Kanoko talked about Mitsuki in a strange way, suggesting that she was a bad person, and warned Haim to be careful around her. Haim believed that Mitsuki was exactly the kind of person who wouldn't be liked by everyone, but Kanoko seemed afraid of Mitsuki simply because she was strange. Kanoko decided to change first. In Haim's elementary school days, her former classmates loved her, and Haim loved everyone in return. However, Mitsuki revealed that Haim's love for everyone was a lie. According to Mitsuki, Haim didn't actually like playing with certain people or hanging out with them, and it became troublesome. As a result, Haim decided to break her facade. Her classmates stopped inviting her and didn't react when she greeted them with a good morning. They remembered that her love for everyone was a lie, and Haim couldn't afford to let anyone discover her facade. She couldn't bear the thought of anyone hating her, and she believed she had to be loved by everyone, just like Mitsuki. Haim mentioned that Kanoko had never known the real her during their elementary school days. Back in the staff room, Haim asked Kanoko to hurry up and finish changing, fearing that Mitsuki might get angry. Haim was under stress, trying to make everyone like her, just like her Oni-sama. However, Kanoko called out to Haim without changing, and Mitsuki opened the curtain and stared at her, triggering memories from their elementary school days. The following day, Haim and Kanoko had no other choice but to approach Mitsuki sneakily. Sumika greeted them and Mai warned Sumika to put her feet down, assuming a scary senpai persona. Mai reminded them to act like students of Lead Girls Academy and greeted them, and Haim looked forward to working for the day. Before the cafe opened, Kanoko expressed her concern that Mitsuki hadn't informed anyone about Haim's facade. Kanoko worried that if people found out Haim was lying, their attitude toward her would change. Kanoko vowed to protect Haim, no matter what others might say, but Haim felt it was too much of a burden for Kanoko. Mitsuki noticed their exchange and told them to change their clothes, emphasizing that they shouldn't be in their street clothes at the salon. Kanoko wondered why Mitsuki hadn't told anyone and was acting as if everything were normal. Haim took the opportunity to sneak a glance at Mitsuki while cleaning a table. After the cafe opened, Mitsuki served a table and explained that Earl Grey was not a type of tea leaf but rather tea flavored with bergamot. Sumika complimented Mitsuki for her extensive knowledge and her accurate guidance, and Mitsuki agreed that she was responsible for overseeing the salon. Mitsuki perhaps asked Sumika to take her duties more seriously, but Sumika thought it wasn't cute of her. She playfully touched Mitsuki's chin, teasing her that she looked perfect and not just cute. Haim observed that everything seemed to be going on as usual, and it didn't appear that Mitsuki had told anyone about her facade. Haim couldn't let her guard down and still didn't fully understand her Oni-sama. Mitsuki offered to help Haim carry the tray, but Haim assured her that she was fine. However, Mitsuki effortlessly carried a tray with just one hand, causing Haim to despair over her inability to fulfill her role as Mitsuki's little sister. Meanwhile, a customer called out to Haim, but she didn't respond, focused on carrying the tray to the kitchen. Mai, who was watching through the security camera, became slightly worried. Mitsuki called Haim three times, and Haim appeared a bit nervous, but she remembered her elementary school days and maintained her facade. Sumika thought that Haim and the others were still first years and it was natural for them to get distracted at times. Mitsuki believed that Haim wouldn't be able to serve in the salon, and Sumika might have to help her by showing the cute face that Haim always wore. Haim thought that Sumika didn't know about her facade, but there was a chance that she already knew but chose to remain quiet. Mitsuki urged Sumika to spill the truth, and Haim suspected that Kanoko might be the one revealing it. Mitsuki called Haim over, asking her to come. Mai decided that Mitsuki should pull Haim out of the salon because Haim wasn't performing her duties properly and seemed spaced out. Mitsuki agreed and planned to return to the salon immediately. Mai offered to cover some of Haim's responsibilities, such as helping Nene at the pass-through and guiding Mitsuki's little sister. They needed to sit down and have a talk. Meanwhile, at the salon, Kanoko searched for something while a customer placed an order, and Kanoko would take care of it. Haim explained to Mitsuki why she was pulled out of the salon, and Mitsuki told Haim to stop pretending. She knew that Haim was lying and was the only one who questioned Haim about it. Haim worried that Mitsuki might have told others about what happened yesterday, but Mitsuki assured her that she hadn't told anyone. Mitsuki believed that Haim was capable of returning to the salon and maintaining her facade, 
but Haim felt like she was just going through the motions. Haim asked Mitsuki if her attitude towards her hadn't changed despite knowing that Haim had been acting all along. Haim admitted that she might have even lied on a few occasions, but Mitsuki's demeanor remained unchanged. Mitsuki was unsure which of Haim's words to believe. It wasn't that Mitsuki hadn't changed her attitude, she simply didn't know how to act. Haim understood Mitsuki's complexities just as there were things she couldn't comprehend about her Oni-sama. Haim had never revealed her facade to anyone else in the past, and now she understood that Mitsuki was genuinely a good person. The part about wanting Mitsuki to like her wasn't a lie, but rather a separate matter. Haim had been scared that others would discover her true self, and she had confided in someone in her class who then spread the truth, resulting in Haim being labeled as a liar. Haim regretted speaking ill of that person and realized that it was Mitsuki Yano, as Haim recognized Mitsuki's real surname. Mitsuki obtained her school ID and showed Haim her true name, and at that moment, Haim remembered Mitsuki from their elementary school days. Haim still doesn't believe Mitsuki is the same girl from elementary school who ruined her reputation. Mitsuki knows Haim is smart, and knowing her, she'd think Haim's pretending to be dumb. But now, Mitsuki understands that Haim didn't know she was the childhood bully. They stare at each other in silence, and were hit with a flashback from the time when Haim introduced herself in elementary school after transferring there. Everyone thought she was cute, and Mitsuki was jealous of that. Haim wanted to get to know everyone and be friends. She quickly became a popular girl in the class, with everyone wanting to talk to her. She admits she was nervous at first, but they all taught her a lot, so she's fine now. She's glad everyone in the class is so nice. While everyone's praising her, she thinks of how someone as cute as her needs to behave adorably to be liked. It was simple for her because she's already used to that. She asks her classmates what they will do in music class, to which a random girl replies that they're practicing for the chorus competition and then asks Haim if she's good at singing. She's not good at all, which surprises her classmates because she looks like she would be. However, she does like music, and before she can continue explaining, a jealous purple-haired girl with a side ponytail interrupts her and asks if she can go talk somewhere else. The girl wants to move the desks and tells her to get out of the way. Haim apologizes because she didn't notice her and offers help. The young Mitsuki just ignores her and continues her work. Other girls think Mitsuki didn't have to say it rudely like that, but they are used to her always nagging. They say Mitsuki is playing the piano accompaniment for the chorus competition and that she's always like that. They are then curious if Haim plays the piano too. Haim tries to avoid the conversation by walking away. With embarrassment, she says she can't play it at all, and it's too hard. But she agrees that they can just sing together then. Haim just says she has to go visit the teacher's office to get away from her classmates. Now alone, she wonders if she's pulling this act off correctly and if she's doing a good job of staying on good terms with her classmates. Her monologue is interrupted when she hears piano being played from a music room. She opens the door and is surprised to see Mitsuki playing it so well. Mitsuki notices Haim and stops, then Haim praises her that she's a great pianist. Mitsuki doesn't answer, and Haim asks if she doesn't recognize her. Haim apologizes for the cleanup scene, but Mitsuki already forgot about that. Haim wants to try playing the piano as well, ignoring that she's interrupting Mitsuki's practice. She insists on giving her a shot, so Mitsuki has no choice but to let the annoying blondie try it. Haim wants to try playing the hardest song Mitsuki has, but Mitsuki tells her the piano isn't a toy. Haim plays the song on the piano perfectly, which shocks Mitsuki and asks why she stopped. Haim then says she loves the piano and that she lied earlier about not being able to play any instruments. She explains that the classmates were obviously saying that to hurt Mitsuki. If she'd said she could play, they would have given Mitsuki a hard time. This explanation is obviously another lie and doesn't make sense. Mitsuki sees through her BS and thinks they'd probably ask Haim to play for the class if she had told them she can play the piano. Mitsuki knows not many people in the class want to play along with her because she's unloved. They don't like it when she asks everyone to take it seriously. She doesn't understand why it's like that. Everyone should be putting their all into it. Haim believes it's because they don't have the confidence to take things seriously like she does. She suddenly remembers that now she has to hide the fact that she can play the piano and that she can't play at school at all. Mitsuki suggests that in that case, they can play it together. They can play a four-hand piece, then she can play too. Haim thinks that's a great idea, but they'd need new music for that. They agree to practice together, which will be alright. And so they cleared the idea with the music teacher, and the two of them began practicing for the chorus competition. Mitsuki learned the new piece right away, 
but Haim needed a lot of practice. She was quick to slack off and get off topic, and Mitsuki told her off for it, but they became very close very quickly. They discussed where they should do today's practice when a random classmate interrupted them. She complained about how Haim always went home so quickly and asked her for a bit of her time. The girl and a few other classmates planned to ask Haim if she'd go swimming with them, but Mitsuki pulled Haim's hand because they didn't have time for this nonsense and they needed to practice. She pulled her hand away from her classmates, which made them mad. A jealous Mitsuki asked Haim to stop being friends with some random side characters. She always acted so happy around them but didn't even like them. Haim understood Mitsuki's concern and explained that this was just an act. She was desperate for attention, so she was putting this up so that everyone in the class liked her. Mitsuki was happy to hear that she wasn't really close to them, but in that case, she shouldn't lie to people. Mitsuki was afraid Haim would pick being friends with side characters over playing the piano. She suggested they practice piano at her house today. She invited her into a big mansion, and Haim was shocked to see Mitsuki's family was super rich. Haim said she was jealous and being born into a family like this would make her every day a joy. Mitsuki told her to stop wasting time chatting and to sit at the piano. They had work to do before the chorus competition, which won't be as easy as Haim hopes. The next day in a music room, Haim struggled with playing the piano. Mitsuki told her she was too easily affected by others' mistakes. To stay calm, she needed to practice a lot. The other classmates started side-eyeing them, and before Haim knew it, everything was starting to fall apart. Out of nowhere, Haim was called to the principal's office. She was asked if Mitsuki was bullying her and forcing her to play the piano with her. Haim found that absurd and started yelling that she was playing the piano because she really wanted to. The principal wondered if that was just how it appeared to others, and Haim wanted to know who started spreading these lies. In the class, Haim wondered where these accusations came from when she just got greeted by her classmates. They again invited her to go to a swimming pool together. Before she could even fully explain that she had a piano practice, her classmates insisted she had to relax sometimes and that she couldn't just let Mitsuki force her to play the piano all the time. Haim now got it. It was them who must have said bad things about Mitsuki to the teacher. Begrudgingly, she agreed to going to the pool. The classmates were happy that they finally got to hang out with Haim, but she only prayed this wouldn't affect her piano skills. Mitsuki, who heard the whole conversation, just walked out of the class, disappointed. That day, Mitsuki practiced alone in the music room, but eventually started crying when she thought of how Haim left her. However, at that moment, Haim appeared before her and told her she decided not to go. She lied to the classmates about her mom telling her to stay at home and couldn't go to the pool. Haim didn't want to hang out with people she didn't even like, and the promise she gave them was a lie. Mitsuki cried some more. She was glad that Haim stayed with her but also didn't like that Haim was a liar. That day, the two didn't practice at all, and Mitsuki didn't scold her at any point. The next day, Haim's classmates were in her face again and wanted to talk to her. They went on about how much fun the pool was. Haim just assumed that the two of them would be okay. So Haim's plan was to stop playing the piano entirely because if she had kept playing, they'd keep writing Mitsuki off as the enemy. She did this to protect Mitsuki. The classmates were now certain Mitsuki forced her to practice the piano. Haim told them she volunteered to play the piano, and nobody forced her. Her saying that she couldn't play the piano was also a lie, and now she came up with another one. She said that because she had no confidence but tried anyway. They didn't blame her because she put up with Mitsuki this long, so she tried hard enough. She lied about how she tried pretty hard but still couldn't keep up with Mitsuki. She said these things to protect Mitsuki, who in that moment showed up to snitch on Haim and tell everyone that Haim was a liar who didn't like any of them. She told them they were hanging out the other day when Haim said she couldn't go to the pool because she had to stay at home. She also told her that it was too annoying to hang out with other people she didn't even like. Haim was shocked that Mitsuki had betrayed her. After the chorus competition, Mitsuki transferred out of the school. Left behind, Haim was called a liar until the day she graduated. There was no way she could forgive Mitsuki. Finally back to the present, Mai asked them to go back to the salon, and Mitsuki said that they were coming. On the way to the salon, Mitsuki thought of the time when she was playing the piano when suddenly, the teacher informed her that Haim had quit. Mitsuki ran to the classroom and overheard the conversation between Haim and classmates where she talked about how she did her best but still couldn't keep up with Mitsuki. Mitsuki remembered all the lies Haim had ever told and even when Haim admitted to being a liar. She couldn't take it anymore, 
so she told everyone that Haim was a liar. Again back in the present, Mitsuki told Haim she was a fool for having any hope for Haim. Haim didn't say anything but knew that it was Mitsuki who ruined their friendship by betraying her. She still couldn't believe she was working with Mitsuki from school this whole time. The audience was happy to see the two back in the salon, and Haim remembered she was actually playing as a younger sister to Mitsuki. Sumika saw the Haim's bewildered face and asked Mitsuki what was going on here. Neither of them answered, but they only thought of the hatred they had for each other. In the present, Mai notices the tension between Haim and Mitsuki and asks Sumika why things got weird between them, but Sumika has no idea. Mitsuki leaves the job in a hurry to avoid the conversation. Mai turns to Haim, but she just ignores her. Kanoko says that they are heading home as well. On the train, Haim tells Kanoko about what Mitsuki did to her back in grade school. Mitsuki was using Ayanoko-ji as a fake name so Haim couldn't know who she really is. When she heard Mitsuki, she just thought it's coincidentally the same first name as Yano. She also didn't notice it's the same person because it's been a long time since she's seen her, and Mitsuki is all grown up and super pretty now. Kanoko suggests Haim doesn't need to keep up the act now just to get Mitsuki to like her. She's just one person, and everybody else already loves her. Mitsuki thinks of how Haim is a liar, a people pleaser, insincere, and the girl who betrayed her. Whenever she thinks about her, she wonders if Haim was the betrayer back then or if things might have worked out. She thinks of when she first met Haim at the cafe where they work. She recognized Haim immediately and was shocked to see her, but still pretended she never saw her and asked who she might be. Haim introduced herself and offered to help. Mitsuki also seemed a bit familiar to Haim, but she didn't really think of it. Mitsuki asks Mai about Haim's last name, to which Mai says it's Shiraki, the same as her childhood friends. Mitsuki wonders if Haim came to work here just to see her. She makes a terrified face when Haim calls her Oni-sama. Over time, she realizes Haim has no idea who Mitsuki truly is and doesn't understand the theme of this cafe. In the present, Sumika watches Mitsuki stare at nothing through the camera. She goes to greet Haim, who just arrived at work, to ask what happened between her and Mitsuki. She wants to help her get any grudges or complaints she may have off her chest. Haim doesn't want to talk about it but asks if Mitsuki said anything about her. Sumika implies she might have said something, but Mitsuki yells from the other room not to give Haim any weird ideas. Sumika thinks some drastic measures might be helpful here. Mitsuki tells her it's nothing to be worried about and that she can do the work just fine. She rudely claims that she now doesn't care about Haim and that Haim shouldn't get any weird ideas. Haim is furious because it was Mitsuki who betrayed her, but she doesn't feel any guilt. Mai asks Mitsuki if she can serve in the salon in her current state. If she can, she won't get in her way. They mustn't forget that while in the salon, they are all students of Lieb Girls Academy. There might be disagreements here and there, but overall she expects them all to act close with each other. Later in the salon, a guest asks Sumika if it's true that there's a new pair of sisters here. Sumika points at Haim and Mitsuki, who just can't get along, and it's apparent to everyone. Guests wonder what the story playing out between these two is. In an attempt to salvage things, Sumika tells Haim that Mitsuki scolded her for carrying the trencher the way she does and should ask Mitsuki for a refresher course. Haim agrees, but when she asks for it from Mitsuki, it becomes increasingly awkward because she's still forced to call her biggest enemy, Wan-sama. Through a fake smile, Mitsuki explains she should carry the trencher with one hand, from below. One guest says it's too bad that Mitsuki didn't teach her like the last time and that she's being a jerk out of nowhere. Haim finally snaps and claims that her one sama, Mitsuki doesn't care about her at all. However, the guests don't buy that because from what they've seen, the two usually aren't like that. Haim arrogantly walks away. Mitsuki is devastated by the situation, and Sumika asks if perhaps she did something uncharacteristic towards her. Mitsuki is too lost in her thoughts to talk to Sumika. So Sumika tries to seduce her by saying that there are also others who wish she'd direct that gaze to. That doesn't work either, and Sumika now understands how strong Mitsuki's feelings for Haim are. Mitsuki is shocked by that statement and immediately breaks out of her emotional daze to scream at Sumika that it's not true. Everyone in the cafe goes silent. Mitsuki apologizes and leaves the place. Later, she rushes into the staff room to explain to Sumika that she's not playing a sister to Haim because she wants to and that Haim's just messing around with all that, please applaud me, and, please watch me, stuff. Sumika thinks that Haim is just being a cute little sister, but Mitsuki disagrees. Haim can't even do the work right, and she doesn't understand the theme of the cafe. 
Mitsuki demands that Haim doesn't mess with her anymore. Sumika says Mitsuki is an open book and that she won't be able to rely on staff members forever. Mitsuki has no idea what that means. The next day, Mitsuki apologizes again, and Sumika asks if she knows why she's being scolded. She went out of character and ruined the theme while in the salon. That is one problem, but the bigger one is that Haim and her aren't getting along, Sumika says. That was a rare slip up by Mitsuki, and Haim suddenly lost the little sister in her. If this goes on, Mai will have to end their Schwestern relationship. They'd have to return the cruise and announce that they've broken up. For some reason, Mitsuki is the only one getting blamed for their poor performance. Mitsuki says she couldn't tolerate such dishonor. She'll do whatever she can to get the job done. To everyone's surprise, Haim tells Mai she doesn't have to continue if Mitsuki doesn't want to. Sumika scolds Haim that their sisterhood was Haim's idea in the first place. Mai calms everyone down and asks what they should do to fix this. Mitsuki suggests that her and Haim speak alone about this. Mai sends Kanoko and Sumika home so that the other two are alone in the salon. There, Mitsuki immediately starts blaming Haim for everything and asks her why she doesn't want to continue being a Schwestern. It's their job, and Haim can't quit that easily. Haim angrily responds that she doesn't care. If Mitsuki hates it so much, she should just quit. Mitsuki understands why Haim would say that since she did the same when she quit piano and distanced herself from Mitsuki. Mitsuki believes Haim betrayed her for the second time. An epic plot twist unfolds as Haim yells that she didn't quit piano because she betrayed Mitsuki but to protect her. Mitsuki is shocked by this and doesn't know how to respond. The interesting conversation is randomly ended as a customer enters the room because he forgot the umbrella. After Mitsuki returns it, she tells Mai that they are done talking. Haim sees that Mitsuki just wanted her out of the way so she can address the customer. Mitsuki makes up her mind and tells Haim they should continue being Schwestern and do it right. She'll do her best to cover up for Haim. Haim is puzzled by the whole conversation. She wonders what Mitsuki is trying to tell her. The next day, Mai puts the two to the test. They will practice their normal work activities. If they can't do them here, they won't manage it during work hours. She'll have them practice until they get it right, no matter how long it takes. Haim wants to make this work, but ever since she found out her older sister is Mitsuki, her act stopped working. Mai takes a moment to review the theme and characters. Mitsuki and Haim are Schwestern, a kind older sister who cares for her little sister, and the innocent, pampered little sister. The two of them will serve visitors in the salon, as usual. They play their roles and talk to each other, but they are both too nervous to say anything. Mai asks what it was like when they first started, when it was going so well. They must have poured some of their real feelings into the characters they played. When Haim first met Mitsuki, she genuinely thought Mitsuki is a kind older sister. Then she turned out to have a hair trigger temper and couldn't read her at all. So she thought, why is she always so harsh with me? They try to talk again, and this time, Haim is much more convincing with her performance. She asks her older sister what will she teach her today, and Mitsuki responds that they'll have her learn how to reset the tables today. After some more Yuri chatting, Mai is satisfied and says this was great. It'd be best if they could practice some more, but they're running out of time. Kanoko is glad they can finally go home and pulls Haim's hand. She praises Haim how she's always able to pull out her act on cue. Haim thought about how she felt until now, and it just came out so naturally. It was supposed to be just an act, but she might be starting to catch feelings for Mitsuki. She starts to realize that all she wanted was for Mitsuki to like her, but Mitsuki hates her now. When Haim and Kanoko come to work the next day, Mai and Sumika discuss something seemingly important. Sumika tells Haim that Mitsuki's slip-up yesterday already got attention online, and Mai shows the blog on her PC about the situation between Haim and Mitsuki. People online are saying that Mitsuki has forced Haim to be Schwestern and showing empathy towards Haim, making Mitsuki look like a villain. Haim can't believe what people online are saying about her. She doesn't feel like Mitsuki has ever forced her to be her sister. She asks where these accusations came from. Sumika explains that similar comments already came before Haim and Mitsuki started arguing. Some people can't help but poke around behind the scenes when they see a happy story, and their fight happened within the context of that rumor of the two not getting along. Haim asks what they want her to do, to which Sumika says she doesn't have to do anything about it. Just be good sisters with Mitsuki, as always. Mai expresses her worry about Mitsuki and how she will respond to the haters online. Sumika thinks she's very serious about work, and she can be stubborn, which is both good and bad. 
Sumika doesn't want Mitsuki to know what people say behind her back. If she hears it, she might fail to stay in character again. Sumika taps Haim's butt and encourages her to help Mitsuki out when she needs it. In the cafe, Haim does a great job of playing her character, helping out her older sister. She offers to carry some plates for Mitsuki, and Mitsuki praises her for being a hard worker. Mitsuki shows her again how to properly carry plates. Haim says she loves how Mitsuki teaches her how to serve at the salon, maybe that's why she keeps getting it wrong. That way, she can have her teach it again. The guests are glad to see that they are getting along. They all heard weird rumors, so they were worried. Sumika is also happy with their performance. Haim encourages herself to keep up the act and not think about the online rumors. However, Mitsuki suddenly feels conflicted, wondering why Haim wanted to be her sister. Haim panics because Mitsuki is, for no reason, creating a heavy atmosphere with her saddened face. She says she's her little sister and just wants to please her older sister. That's all. Mitsuki agrees and walks away, seemingly emotionless. One guest tells Haim she should do things the way she wants and not how Mitsuki forces her to. Haim tells the guest there's nothing like that. Besides, a good little sister listens to her older sister. Haim doesn't know why things won't work out. She walks away from the guest to show Mitsuki again how she carries plates like she taught her. Mitsuki says she's doing it right and to just be careful now. In the kitchen, Haim cries about how they always have to make Mitsuki look like the bad guy. Why does it have to end up like how it was back then? Kanoko sees Haim crying and asks what's wrong. She just feels like things never work out. Kanoko tells her she's doing the work fine. Haim says even if she does the work properly, it just comes off as forced, like the rumors. Mitsuki is aware that being criticized is unavoidable. She's responsible so she's prepared to face the consequences. Sumika tells her to forget about the mistake and focus on making up today. That should make things easier for Haim too. Sumika believes if Haim likes her the way she always has, that'll make Mitsuki happy. Mitsuki feels like Sumika is teasing her and blushes. Mitsuki always gets so upset when someone points out the truth to her. Sumika doesn't know what happened but tells Mitsuki to be more honest. Haim would probably do the same. That's what Sumika meant by making up. In the cafe, Mitsuki walks up to two guests who were gossiping about her. She asks them if everything is alright. It's the same guest who spoke to Haim earlier about the rumors that Mitsuki is forcing Haim to be her sister. The guest encourages her to continue having a great relationship with Haim and not mind the rumors at all, but Mitsuki still doesn't know anything about the rumors. In the kitchen, Haim is still crying about the whole situation, and Kanoko asks why she cares that much about Mitsuki. It's the person who betrayed her before and hates her now. However, even still, Haim won't let people keep treating Mitsuki like the villain. Mitsuki hasn't changed at all since school. She's so serious, so stubborn, such a do-gooder, and tough on others. So she gets hated on and bad-mouthed, treated as the bad guy. That's why she has to be the one to help Mitsuki. In that moment, Mitsuki shows up before her. She overheard that last part. She also heard about the rumor about her and Haim. She asks if helping her was what she was thinking about while working in the salon today. Haim explains she's doing it for her sake because she always gets treated like the bad guy. Mitsuki doesn't understand. Haim always says those kind words, but she's still a liar and backstabber. Mitsuki then asks why Haim wants them to keep being sisters. Mitsuki doesn't know which part of Haim she should understand. Haim tells that Mitsuki doesn't believe her because at the end of the day, she hates her. Even if they could go back and do over grade school, Haim would probably do the same thing. Haim angrily walks into the cafe and yells she's a Schwestern because she wants to be. Maybe things aren't going well, but she wants to be Schwestern with her older sister, and that's why she does it. Sumika asks what's wrong, and that this is not good. Haim goes on that she can't accept people speaking badly of Mitsuki because she's insisting on being Schwestern with her. Haim takes out the cruise and shows it to Mitsuki but Mitsuki says she's saying and doing totally opposite things. Why would she repeat what happened before? Haim admits she's lying because she loves Mitsuki and asks for understanding this time. Mitsuki says what she's doing is not right. Why would Haim decide anything based on what people think about Mitsuki? If they both want to continue, then there's no need to quit. Mitsuki confesses that she loves Haim, so she shouldn't stop being her sister. Both are in tears as Mitsuki hugs Haim. Haim understands now she should have chosen the thing she wanted to do sooner. There was no need to lie. Mitsuki apologizes, realizing the pain she caused Haim. The guests, deeply moved by their emotional reconciliation, 
applaud the two for finally making up. Sumika is elated with the positive outcome, pleased to see them back together. However, Kanoko remains jealous, unable to hide her envy despite the heartwarming moment between Haim and Mitsuki. In the office, Mai openly admits her initial worries but expresses her pleasant surprise at the positive turn in the relationship between Haim and Mitsuki. She emphasizes that the rumors were just rumors, and the fact that the two of them are on good terms again is the most heartening aspect of the situation. In the cafe, Haim is visibly happier now that she knows Mitsuki loves her. She wishes Mitsuki had confessed her feelings sooner, as Haim had believed Mitsuki hated her and that their relationship was irreparable. Mitsuki, displaying her tsunere nature, dismisses Haim's happiness, stating that their current closeness is just a temporary situation. Haim, however, believes they can go back to being a friendly pair like before. Mitsuki, recalling their past interactions, admits that she once had hopes for something more, but quickly rebuffs Haim's inquiry about her feelings. A few days pass, and Mai informs the employees that the salon will soon open, wishing them good luck. Haim and Mitsuki, now super close again, welcome the guests and guide them to their seats. The salon is bustling with activity, but the two sisters handle it smoothly. Sumika remarks to Haim about the increased number of visitors, attributing it to the renewed closeness between Haim and Mitsuki. Haim eagerly asks Mitsuki if there's anything she can do to help, showing her eagerness to work. Mitsuki, noticing Haim's enthusiasm despite the busy atmosphere, acknowledges her dedication. Haim is overjoyed because Mitsuki finally admitted that she loves her. Mitsuki, flustered, pulls Haim closer and asks her not to tease her like that. Haim, overwhelmed by Mitsuki's proximity, is unable to respond, and Kanoko watches the interaction with jealousy. Sumika notices Kanoko's envy, understanding the emotions at play. Kanoko appreciates her time at work because it allows her to be close to Haim, even more so than at school, where all the girls admire the salon representatives who go there together. Mai explains that the student who receives the adoration of every student in the academy and represents the academy is called Blue Sama. The election to vote for Bloom is the event that truly determines the top flower of the academy. Blue Sama, as an example for the school, can set one new rule for everyone to follow, aiming to achieve the ideal school. Mai emphasizes the importance of everyone following the rule set by Blue Sama. Sumika points out that this concept appears in the novel, similar to Schwester. When Haim questions if every student in the academy refers to the five of them, Mai clarifies that it includes the five salon workers and all the other students, totaling around 450. The salon workers are already elite students, widely adored, so naturally, Blue Sama comes from their ranks. Additionally, the sister of the Blue Sama is called the Blue Schwester, who also receives a lot of adoration. Essentially, it's a popularity contest that begins in the cafe. The next detail they need to know is about work-related notices. During the election season, there is an additional cake on the menu called the Blue Noctish. Each time someone orders it, they must receive a ballot sheet. Additionally, the five of them receive 90 votes each, representing the 450 students of the academy. The information on who voted for whom will also be revealed, so they need to use this to develop their character as a talking point in the salon. However, this overload of information is too much for Haim to handle. Kanoko reassures her, promising to explain it all again later. Mai explains that the person who receives the most votes becomes Bloom Sama. Haim wonders if they are allowed to vote for themselves, and Sumika praises her for being engaged in the process. She then asks if there is a rule Haim wants to propose. Haim suggests a rule where the whole academy has to love her, but Kanoko whispers to her that this is the essence of Bloom Sama, leaving Haim surprised. Mai praises Haim's view of Bloom Sama and considers it a good idea. Mitsuki, considering Haim as her little sister, believes Haim should vote for her. However, Kanoko thinks Haim should aim to become Blue Sama, and voting for herself wouldn't be selfish. Mai encourages them to have these kinds of discussions in the salon to liven up the atmosphere. The bloom period officially starts that day, and Mai wishes everyone good luck. Before heading to the salon, Sumika stops Kanoko to inform her that she placed her phone in the safe and asks if she wants it back. Kanoko, feeling shy, tells her it's okay for Sumika to keep it. Haim overhears this and wonders why Sumika still has her phone. Sumika explains it's because there's no use for it during work. Sumika then questions if Haim is the only one she can talk to. Haim doesn't understand what she means, but Sumika dismisses it quickly and wishes them luck during work. 
Haim takes Kanoko to another room to address her difficulty in talking to other people. Kanoko assures her that it's fine and that Sumika was able to understand what she was saying. Haim asks if she thanks Sumika for holding on to her phone. But Kanoko admits that talking to people she doesn't know makes her extremely nervous, so she forgot. She understands the importance of being able to talk to people other than Haim. Kanoko acknowledges that Sumika isn't a stranger, she just finds it challenging. Haim suggests they try talking to people naturally as a starting point to overcome Kanoko's social anxiety. Kanoko feels it's a daunting task. In the salon, Kanoko wonders if she really needs to be able to talk to people here. Mitsuki is seen taking orders for the currently popular dessert, Bloom Noctish. Sumika complains how only recently did the rustling of spring quiet down, and now everyone is talking about Bloom. The whole academy is abuzz over the Bloom and she's tired of it. Mitsuki scolds her that this is a tradition in the academy. She should act appropriately, especially as a candidate herself. Sumika thinks Mitsuki is being very serious about this, so maybe Mitsuki should try to become Bloom herself then. But Mitsuki believes Sumika should be chosen, her wisdom and demeanor are adored by everyone. It's her duty to become Bloom-sama and live up to everyone's expectations. In the corner, Haim wonders what's going on with Mitsuki. She told her to vote for her, but now she's pushing Sumika to become Blue-sama. A guest asks Haim about her thoughts on the Blue election. It sounds nice to her, and she'd love to become Blue-sama if it's possible for her. The guests would love to see a first year be a Blue-sama, so they praise her. Haim makes a weird face, thinking of how she's, of course, going for this. After all, this is a popularity contest, voting to decide who's most loved. Kanoko is also rooting for her and will always be there to support her. Sumika mentions Haim seems very eager herself. In response, she asks Haim to tell Mitsuki that Haim can do all the work, so she can let Sumika off the hook. Haim believes Mitsuki has a point and she asks Sumika to listen to her. Sumika tells her not to play hard to get, she could occasionally betray her sister and be nice to Sumika instead. Kanoko gets jealous and confronts Sumika. Sumika tells her she was just joking, so she should calm down. Guests suspect Kanoko was jealous, which may have been Sumika's intention. Sumika returns Kanoko her phone and tells her not to lose it again. She also asks if she did anything to deserve Kanoko's glare. Kanoko didn't think Sumika was the type to get in her way, but she does. She doesn't respond to Sumika, so Haim steps in to say Kanoko can be kind of shy, so it's a relief that it wasn't a stranger who found her phone. Kanoko thinks that's not the reason why she can't talk right now, but because Sumika's trying to mess with Haim. Sumika tells them not to worry about it. For Kanoko, the most important thing is talking to Haim. Kanoko notices Sumika is intensely looking at her, then remembers that in the salon, Sumika also seemed to be messing with Haim after looking at her. It's almost like she knows her feelings. She then finally understands why Sumika took her phone. Sumika went over her gallery and saw hundreds of pictures of Haim that Kanoko has, which gave away how Kanoko truly feels about Haim. Mai enters the room and praises everyone for the work today and that they need to make this more and more exciting. Starting today, they'll tally votes after closing. Sumika suggests the rest of them count the votes, so Haim and Kanoko can spend time reading the book. She wants them to learn the theme as soon as possible. Mai thinks that's okay. Before leaving, Haim reminds Kanoko she should thank Sumika for finding her phone, which she shyly does. A few minutes later, Haim has already fallen asleep while reading the boring book, and Kanoko is still curious if Sumika knows about Kanoko's feelings. However, she did make time for her to be alone with Haim, at the end, so maybe she's not trying to get in Kanoko's way. She takes a couple of pictures of sleeping Haim, which makes her feel better. She found a phrase in the book that fits them perfectly. There is little we can do while keeping this love a secret. The only thing we can touch is a lock of each other's hair, but my heart races, as if grasped by you. Kanoko won't let anyone get in their way. The next day, a random blondie greets Kanoko, and she doesn't respond. The blondie says it's rare to see Kanoko alone because she's always with Haim. She puts her hand around Kanoko, and she starts screaming. Inside, Haim asks how Kanoko thought Sumika is a stranger. Sumika is for some reason dressed completely different, and Kanoko didn't recognize her, but Haim thinks she's always like this. Kanoko has never seen her out of the Lieb uniform, and Haim admits she's seen her like this only once. Kanoko thought Sumika is more modest since she's always reading at the salon and wears glasses. Haim thinks that this is just a stereotype. Sumika interjects to tell them the glasses she usually wears are fake, which shocks Haim and Kanoko. Sumika was never actually reading at the salon. She's just holding a book open. 
It makes her look more like an intellectual senpai. The kitchen girl, Nene, comes in to bring a message from the kitchen, saying that the blue noctish is selling faster than expected, and at this rate, they might not be able to defrost them fast enough. In which case, they need to switch from matcha flavor to cheese flavor. Mai is extremely excited that things are going really well. They are also running out of balance, so Mai will have to make more. This year around, she's opted out of the race due to her injury, so she can concentrate on backstage work. Sumika asks if Kanoko will vote for Haim, as she's eager to become Bloom. In that case, Sumika might vote for her as well. Haim is grateful to Sumika for that, but before they can shake hands, Kanoko tells that she is the one who will vote for Haim, so Sumika doesn't have to bother. Sumika is messing with Kanoko using Haim. Mai wants the three of them to use those conversations for the salon. Kanoko is scared of what Sumika's intentions might be. In the salon, Mitsuki and Haim serve the customers as usual, while Kanoko remains suspicious of Sumika, who stood there pretending to read a book. People thought she was well-read, but she was just insecure. Sumika asked Kanoko and Haim if they liked reading books. Haim admitted she didn't read much. She enjoyed talking to people, finding books suffocating. Sumika explained how books contained new places, knowledge, and lives, offering a world within each one where one could spend time freely without feeling lonely or suffocated. The guests praised her composure, telling her she truly deserved to be Blue Sama. Haim was surprised at how well Sumika could act, considering she didn't even read. Sumika also asked Kanoko if she read, recommending her a romance story about a British medieval aristocrat. Kanoko was still lost in her thoughts about why Sumika was lying about loving books so much. She knew Sumika couldn't make up details about the book because some guests might have read the same one. Instead of responding, Kanoko ran away, avoiding the question. Haim followed her, concerned about her well-being. She asked if it was still too hard to talk to Sumika, but Kanoko assured her she wasn't. She promised to give it a try next time, despite finding Sumika intimidating. Haim sensed something was off, feeling that Sumika wasn't a bad person. Nene stepped in, telling them not to talk about Sumika behind her back, but Kanoko didn't think that's what they were doing. She also pointed out that they rarely saw Sumika outside of work because she started before any of them and kept working even after they left. Sumika then entered the kitchen, asking Nene if they were out of Blumenox already. They weren't, and she asked for the booze the guests had ordered. Haim offered to carry it, but Sumika explained that only the upperclassmen were supposed to handle the alcohol. Later, Kanoko read the book Sumika had suggested to her earlier. She was surprised that Sumika was right about the plot, and her review seemed accurate too. Sumika caught her reading it and was delighted to see she was right about Kanoko being a reader too. Kanoko asked how she knew about all this when she hadn't even read the book, but Sumika explained that she didn't specifically read at the salon. If she read there, she wouldn't be able to get any work done. The only books she opened at the salon were ones she had already read. She also told Kanoko not to call her by her last name, but by her first one outside of work. Kanoko felt more confident talking to her now and asked what Sumika was trying to do when she kept talking to her after finding her phone. Sumika simply said she was trying to be friendly with her and encouraged Kanoko to do the same. On the bus, Kanoko noticed that Haim had decided to read as well, but she only did it because she felt bad for Sumika, who was doing extra work to give them time. Kanoko rethought that Sumika might not be as scary as she had thought, realizing that Haim had been trying to tell her the same thing. Sumika remembers when, years ago, two co-workers told her it wasn't nice to intervene in other people's romance. In the present, she thinks about how well the students in the salon get along, and she doesn't mean it in a fictional sense. Their actual friendship is what makes this place work. She praises everyone for being hardworking. Haim tells Mitsuki she's starting to learn how to do the work too. Mitsuki thinks that's wonderful, and sure enough, the visitors will appreciate her efforts as well. Sumika is glad to see that both Haim and Mitsuki have a good look on their faces. Haim is working very hard and asks if Mitsuki will vote for her too. But Mitsuki avoids the question, saying that's a separate matter. A bloom Sama needs to have a proper air about her. Haim doesn't know what Mitsuki means by air. It's a pure beauty, one that can be representative of their academy. Haim hesitantly agrees, disappointed that Mitsuki won't vote for her. Sumika giggles at their encounter, thinking about how Mitsuki never changes. Kanoko walks up to Haim and assures her that she will support her run for Bloom. Sumika thinks Kanoko's always watching Haim and not looking at anything else. She first thought Kanoko was a timid friend, but no, she's bringing romance into this place. She asks Kanoko if she's rooting for Haim. It's hard for a first year to become Bloom, 
but she sure Haim appreciates her support. Kanoko must be a very caring friend. Kanoko agrees. If she can help Haim, that will make her happy as well. From the back, Haim suggests that in case Kanoko votes for her, she should return the favor and vote for her back. But Kanoko doesn't want to become Bloom Sama, which surprises Haim. Sumika interjects, telling Haim she should consider voting for her older sister, Mitsuki, who's sulking over there across the room. Mitsuki gets flustered and tries to explain that's not true, but Sumika reminds her that she said it herself, that as a younger sister, Haim should vote for her. She admits she did say that. However, Haim can vote for whomever she wishes. Besides, she believes it's Sumika who should be Bloom Sama. Haim takes this as her sister Mitsuki not supporting her. Mitsuki explains that Bloom Sama is a representative of the school, and as a first year, it's too early for her. Sensing Mitsuki's embarrassment, Haim plays the victim further and asks if she's unworthy. She's trying very hard, but if her older sister won't support her, she will be sad. Mitsuki hugs her and calls her a selfish girl, but Haim smirks, as her plan worked perfectly. Kanoko gets jealous again, but Sumika stops her before she can intervene in the scene. Sumika thinks they are good sisters, and it would be lovely to see them as Bloom Schwestern. The guests are excited for them, thinking both Haim and Mitsuki are great candidates for Bloom. Later, Haim asks if Kanoko has already finished reading the book. She reads it at home too, but Haim is still on volume 1. Haim is unsure if reading the whole thing would make her understand the theme. Kanoko finished the book much faster but won't go home early, she'll wait for Haim. She has some business to take care of anyway. Outside, Sumika went to carry some garbage, but when she returns, she sees Kanoko at the door waiting for her. Kanoko wanted to know what this Schwestern thing is. She read about it in the book, but she needs more specifics now, like how it is being interpreted here in the cafe. Sumika tells her not to overthink it, it interferes with work. It's not a romantic relationship. They are not asking anyone to pretend to be lovers or actually be in love. So, Kanoko can hop on the Schwestern train too if she wants. That said, Sumika is the only one available. Kanoko understands, but if she can't be with Haim, it's of no use to her. She wonders why Haim wants to be sisters with that person. Sumika thinks it's because they're close. They became friends really quickly, which is ideal sisterhood. Kanoko gets frustrated. She believes she's the only friend Haim has, which confirms Sumika's suspicions about her. Sumika tries to explain to her that she understands her worries about a friend, but if she's too possessive, Haim might not like that. Kanoko tears up. Sumika is surprised she's tearing up just from that and thinks that's unfair because now she can't say anything else to her. Kanoko suddenly worries about Haim, so she goes back inside to see her. Sumika already knows what happens when romance gets brought into this place from the past. Here at the salon, the students get along very well. Their actual friendship is what makes this place work, but that's so easy to break. Sumika won't let anyone break it again. As she looks at Haim and Kanoko walking back home, she swears that if Kanoko's going to bring romance into this place, if she's going to try to break this place apart, she'll have to stop her. The next day, Mai is ready to reveal the mid-election results. Only one week remains in the Bloom election season. She will post the results so far in the salon, where they should discuss them openly. Haim is looking extremely forward to seeing the numbers, but when Mai hands them over to her, she's baffled to find herself in last place. Mai praises her for working very hard and performing admirably as a little sister, and as a result, all of the votes went to her older sister, Mitsuki, which obviously wasn't Haim's intention. She says that maybe she's not cut out to be Bloom Sama. Mai thinks that her character isn't really the type to typically become Bloom Sama. She's cute but not calm. She works hard but is still inexperienced, making her the ideal little sister of Bloom Sama. Mai also praises Atsuki, who's receiving appreciation for the work she's done, making her currently the favorite to become Bloom Sama. After becoming Schwestern with Haim Sama, she's doing really well as Haim's older sister. Embarrassed, Mitsuki tells Haim she wasn't trying to beat her and was, in fact, hoping Sumika becomes Bloom Sama, but Haim isn't bothered by it. She will give up on becoming Bloom. If Mitsuki wins, Haim can still become Bloom Schwester. Kanoko suddenly drags Haim out of the room to talk to her about something. Mai encourages everyone to do their best to make the salon a great place today too. In another room, Kanoko asks Haim what's wrong. She wanted to be Bloom this whole time, but now she's settling for being Bloom Schwester. Haim wouldn't put it like that. She's okay if Mitsuki becomes Bloom. She thinks of how Mitsuki used to be so bad at using a facade, but now she does it as a part of work and gets praised for it. 
So when thinking of it that way, Heim doesn't feel so bad. In fact, it kind of makes her happy. Maybe this is what the sister pair thing is all about. Kanoko is devastated hearing this, as her jealousy grows. Sumika tries to enter the room where Haim and Kanoko are, but as soon as she touches the door handle, Kanoko storms out and begs her to become Bloom. The scene shifts to the salon, where the guests are excited to see the Bloom results so far. They see Mitsuki is going head to head with Sumika and congratulate her. She says she never thought she would be able to be on the same level as Sumika. She'll challenge her and hope to learn from the experience. Still, this puts her in a bind. She's personally supporting Sumika. The guests are happy for Mitsuki's success but are saddened for Haim, who was really motivated to become Bloom. Mitsuki comforts her by telling her not to be too disappointed, but Haim says she isn't at all. She was thinking that maybe it's not her but her older sister who is more suited to become Bloom. Mitsuki is surprised, considering Haim wanted to become Bloom so very much. Haim still feels a desire for the title, but the thought of Mitsuki becoming Bloom makes her happy, as if it's her own achievement. So she'd like to spend the rest of the election period supporting her older sister. Mitsuki blushes again and tells her to stop meddling and support Sumika instead, which baffles Haim, as Mitsuki told her earlier to vote for her. We then see the scene from a few moments ago when Kanoko asked Sumika to become Bloom. Kanoko expressed her worries that at this rate, Haim and that person will become Bloom Schwestern. Sumika thinks that would have been the same if Haim became Bloom herself, but Kanoko disagrees. She's willing to give Sumika her own vote, so Sumika can become Bloom. Sumika knows she can still win, as long as she has all of the students' votes, that being her own, Kanoko's, Mitsuki's, and Mai's. Kanoko seems to understand the system very well. That being said, Sumika asks why she should listen to Kanoko at all when she hasn't even explained herself. Kanoko thought she could rely on her for anything and asks kindly if she can make her wish happen. Sumika agrees, but she has a request of her own. If she does as she's told, Sumika will turn this around, starting today. In her head, Sumika is thinking of how she needs to stop her, getting so emotional about the person Kanoko loves, being so jealous of a pretend sisterhood. It all ends here before their relationships are destroyed. Before Sumika's request is revealed, we're cut back to the present, where Kanoko asks Haim again if she's no longer trying to become Bloom Sama, in which case she won't vote for her anymore. Haim asks her to vote for her older sister, Mitsuki, instead, which worries Sumika about how Kanoko will react. Expectingly, Kanoko refuses that, making Haim think she's opting out of the Bloom election. Sumika steps in to tell that's not the case. Kanoko wants to decide on her own who to support, a suitable person for herself, just as Haim supports Mitsuki. She reveals Sumika is, in her opinion, the most suitable candidate for Bloom-sama. According to Sumika, Kanoko's been pushing her to go for Bloom for some time now, but she didn't have a chance to express her thoughts to others. She's finally mustered up the courage to do so. Everyone, including the guests, is shocked by this, as they suspected something was going on between Kanoko and Sumika. The crowd is excited for the new partnership, and many of them decide to vote for Sumika. Kanoko is happy that the plan worked, making Sumika closer to becoming Bloom. Haim is understanding about Kanoko's decision, saying that in that case, she should keep supporting Sumika. Haim didn't know Kanoko put so much thought into it. Sumika quietly asks Kanoko if she's happy with how it all played out. Kanoko's glad she relied on Sumika. She goes back to Haim, who tells her she should have told her about this sooner. After work, the new pair, Kanoko and Sumika, goes to McDonald's, where Kanoko thanks her for everything today. She believes they can now gather more votes for Sumika. Sumika fulfilled her end of the bargain, and now it's Kanoko's turn to hear Sumika's request. It's something she's been meaning to ask for a long time, naively thinking she maybe doesn't need to anymore. She briefly mentions how Kanoko loves Haim but won't do anything about it, which instantly makes Kanoko blush. Kanoko intensely stares, thinking how Sumika truly knows how she feels. As her Yandere personality becomes more and more apparent, she decides to make another request. If Sumika becomes Bloom, she can make a rule. Kanoko wants her to use that right to abolish the Schwestern. That would let Haim come back. She's been behaving weirdly around Kanoko this whole time. Sumika is shocked by what she's saying and gets serious. She sees that Kanoko understands this whole thing very well, including where the boundaries are and also what she should do to destroy everything and make the whole cafe fall apart. She shows Kanoko the picture she stole from her phone that Kanoko took and confronts her about her being in love with Haim, that being the reason for her jealousy of their sisterhood. Sumika demands Kanoko stops all of that and gives up on Haim. 
Sumika is the type that interferes after all. Kanoko walks out of McDonald's, and Sumika runs right after her. She again tells her to give up on Haim, or bad things will happen. Kanoko ignores her and keeps walking until Sumika stops chasing her. Suddenly, she's worried about Haim and tries to call her, but Haim doesn't pick up. She goes over her gallery to see her collection of Haim's pictures, and that makes her feel better. A flashback unfolds of how they first met. Back then, Kanoko is a loner without friends. Haim is discussing with her classmates about the celebration video they plan to make since the end of the school year is getting close. They are all good friends, enjoying life, and Kanoko hates them all. They take up space because they are a big group. Kanoko has a place of her own, away from prying eyes. One day, Haim walks up to Kanoko, alone, sitting on the stairs where she always eats. In the classroom, Kanoko is worried that a good kid like Haim will tell on her. Haim explains to Kanoko that she and other classmates are congratulating their teacher on her wedding as part of the celebration video. They are all going to do something or say their congrats and then put it all together into one video. Haim encourages her to join them. It's a class-wide event. Kanoko doesn't feel like she can say no when Haim claims it's a class-wide event. Kanoko thinks in her bed that the supposed good kids can do the celebration on their own and that Haim shouldn't stalk her up the stairs just to bother her with something dumb. The next day, Haim praises Kanoko, saying she found a good spot for a relaxing lunch. Haim asks her to go outside because it seems nice. Kanoko wonders if Haim is doing this because she's a good kid or does she pity how lonely she is. From then on, Haim comes to visit her every day. At first, Kanoko feels she doesn't need that stuff. In the classroom, two students come up to her to ask her to make a signboard for the video. There's a shot at the end of the video with the whole class, and they need it for that. Something like, congratulations on your wedding. Kanoko shyly asks if it has to be her, but they explain she's the only one who's not doing anything. Feeling pressured, Kanoko agrees. She's not good at this at all, but she will still try. On her way to lunch, Haim stops her to tell her she should say it if she doesn't want to do it, otherwise, they won't know. If she doesn't speak out, it's like it never happened. Kanoko simply states there is no problem and walks away. In the class, a classmate of Kanoko's thinks she's done a good work with the signboard, so they can now go ahead and put it on the frame. Kanoko thinks it's not finished yet, but the girl tells her not to worry about the details. Besides, they're going to use that sign tomorrow. They got permission to film the group shot on the roof. After class, Haim takes the signboard to her usual lunch place and starts destroying it. Haim sees what Kanoko has done but just walks away from it. The classmates show Kanoko what someone has done with her signboard. It was found by the stairs to the roof. They think it has to be someone who knew about the video shoot. Kanoko is surprised Haim didn't tell anyone who did it. She then remembers what Haim told her. If you don't speak out, it's like it never happened. She confesses she's the one who broke the signboard. She never wanted to make this. They don't get why she's saying that now when she's the one who made the signboard. Haim steps in to defend Kanoko, saying Kanoko couldn't have done this yesterday because she was with her. According to Haim, yesterday after school, Kanoko showed her the finished sign and went straight home. Kanoko doesn't understand why Haim is doing this for her. Haim whispers to Kanoko to stay quiet, she'll explain later. She tells the classmates Kanoko is trying to settle this by taking the fall for it, and they should stop trying to find out who did it. There's nothing they can do even if they find out who did it. They will try to remake the thing during lunch break. Haim is sure they can finish it in time if they work together. Kanoko wonders if Haim is always lying. Together, they go to the rooftop to talk. Haim borrowed the key for the video. Everyone in class trusts her, and so they believed what she said this morning too. Not what Kanoko said, but what Haim said. Haim thinks Kanoko sucks at using a facade. Kanoko asks if by facade she means this good kid act. She angrily admits she hates these types of people. They are so insensitive and arrogant, always so righteous and good, and they always take the spaces where she can be. Haim tells her her facade might not be as bad after all, as she kept these things all to herself. Kanoko starts to realize Haim might be different from the rest. Haim thinks everyone's so terrible to Kanoko, but she's always just taking it, being the good kid, so she was worried. Haim was annoyed by how Kanoko didn't push back. Kanoko says she did and it didn't work, but Haim knows that's just a terrible excuse. Kanoko tells her she's different than usual. Haim's facade is the most perfect and cutest. She's going to use this cuteness to become loved by everyone. She's not going to grit her teeth to put up with everyone. Everyone is going to want her. That's what she's working so hard for. She's not going to settle for being the good kid. Kanoko is surprised how different she is from all the others. 
considering she's a part of the group. She says tearfully she'll stop being the silent, good kid. Someone told on her once, it was terrible. She wasn't going to tell anyone because of that. Kanoko is the only one who knows about it. Kanoko found out about it because Haim helped her, but Haim couldn't stop herself. She did it because Kanoko reminded her of a person who outed her, Mitsuki. Kanoko wonders if she was similar to her, but in Mitsuki's case, she couldn't stop being honest, but she also had no facade-making skills, and she couldn't leave her alone. Still, she ended up hating Haim in the end. Kanoko promises she won't hate her. Haim thinks that would be nice, now that she finally has a friend. Haim wants to take a break from her facade when it's just her and Kanoko. As Haim lays her head on Kanoko's shoulder, she blushes. She notices Haim has such pretty eyelashes, impeccable skin, hair that smells nice, and such a petite face. Is this what being drawn in is like? Being cute is awesome. That's how their friendship began for them. From that day on, she's been Haim's one and only friend, the only special person. At that moment, Haim calls her back and apologizes for not picking up earlier. She was in the bath. Kanoko says she just wanted to hear her voice, that's all. Haim thinks she seems kinda tired. Kanoko should vent if she needs to, as she's the type to let these things pile up. She wishes Haim good night and hangs up. At that moment, Mitsuki sees her and asks what she's doing here. She just says she's going home, but before leaving, Kanoko tells her they are nothing alike, leaving Mitsuki confused. On the bus, she thinks of how in the school, she had to make another signboard after destroying the first one. Haim stood up for her so she couldn't let her down. No one ever figured out who broke the first one thanks to Haim. On the roof, they eat together, and Haim praises Kanoko for pulling off the facade, but she just did as Haim thought her. If Kanoko can keep this up, maybe she won't need Haim anymore. But Kanoko explains the only reason she was able to do it is that she saw Haim's face. She wants to be able to help her too if she can. Haim asks for her phone, and with it, they take pictures. Haim tells her to stare at this picture if she needs an energizing boost. Her cuteness is a facade, but her real self is even cuter. The only person who knows that is Kanoko, her special someone. A few days later, Kanoko goes to work alone. She reflects on how successfully she kept hidden what happened in McDonald's between her and Sumika. She sees Sumika on the stairs, waiting for her, but she ignores her and walks past her. Sumika asks Kanoko if she won't listen to her wish, considering she wanted her to become Bloom. Kanoko says it's fine. She'll find another way to get Haim back, so Sumika should stay out of her way. Sumika threatens her, saying she will make it so that Schwestern can't be cancelled if she becomes Bloom, making those two sisters forever. Kanoko gets frustrated, but Sumika explains she's doing this to protect the salon. She has seen what happens when romance is brought here. She pulls out two crews and explains how years ago, they had two other students, but romance destroyed their relationship. One was a second year called Sayanji. She, Mai, and Sumika were the original cast. Another third year joined afterward, called Goedo. She became popular among the guests immediately. It was impossible to read whatever Goedo was thinking, and she was quick to grasp other people's weaknesses. She was hard to like but had charm. Goedo was approaching Sayanji san romantically, and Sumika could tell Sayanji san was attracted to her. The guests were wondering what those two were whispering so secretly as they were leaving the salon. At the time, Sumika didn't care about their romance, but they shouldn't avoid guests. Goedo says Sumika stopped paying attention to her, but since she's always learning from the second year, there's nothing for her to do. Goedo teases Sumika that she was just worried because Sayanji is always spending time with her, and that might displease her. Sumika isn't upset over a small thing like that, as Goedo is still new and needs Sayanji to learn how to do the work. Sumika explains she always got along fine with both Goedo and Sayanji, but not in a romantic way. She stood no chance against Goedo, who approached women with romantic intent. Goedo whispers to Sumika not to be worried, as she's doing this only to please the customers. There's nothing to be worried about. There was nothing Sumika could do. Goedo was just stacking up small things like that until it was impossible to turn back. By that time, Goedo and Sayanji were already lovers. She warned Sayanji Goedo seems like bad news, but Sayanji thought Sumika doesn't understand because she's never been in love. Mai, seemingly unaware of the complications, kept praising everyone for the good work they're doing. Sayanji asked her if it would be possible for her to work more on the weekends so she can work at the same time as Goedo. Sumika wondered if love is really all that important. Does it take precedence over everything else? Sumika saw the two leave the salon together and got suspicious. 
Mai told her to not just look around but to do some work. Sumika goes after them and follows them into another room. She should have stopped them much earlier. In there, she's shocked to see them passionately kissing. Goedo says it's not nice to interfere with other people's romance. Sumika's furious to see Goedo wear crews as it's only meant for sisters. Sayanji apologizes in her place and asks if she could be Shwestern with Goedo. And so, the Shwestern relationship between Sumika and Sayanji was cancelled. Goedo became her elder sister instead. Still, Sumika tried to believe Goedo would be a better elder sister than her. The sisters who were also lovers were extremely close, of course. It's like they were lost in their own world. She thought, so this is what romance is like. She tried to convince herself that things were fine. But it wasn't. Goedo quit the salon because of her real job or something. She threw away Sayanji and the Shwestern so easily. Sayanji was the only one who was serious about it. After being abandoned like that, Sayanji couldn't keep working at the salon. So their romance destroyed their relationship. However, Kanoko doesn't care about this long flashback. She doesn't know those people. Sumika explains their job is to be friendly to each other as students of Lieb Girls Academy. To do that, the best way is for them to actually be close to each other. But romance is out of the question. That's what destroys them. Just like Kanoko is trying to destroy them now. Kanoko screams she'll never give up on Haim. She wants Sumika to leave them alone. She doesn't care about the bloom, but Sumika goes on that as long as she's in love with Haim, she'll want to break up the current relationships at some point, and they won't be able to continue as they are. Kanoko thinks things are great right now. Haim won't fall in love with anyone, and she will always be her friend. That's all she wants. Love confessions or things like that won't ever happen. Kanoko just wants to stay by her side. Sumika doesn't know what any of that even means. Kanoko tells her if she wants to ban romance, she's not the one she should say that to, implying Mitsuki might be in love with Haim. Sumika asks her if she'll stop with the romance, but Kanoko thinks there's nothing to stop. She won't do anything. Inside, Mai shows everyone the ballot for the cast members. There, each of them will write the name of the person who they believe should be Bloom Sama and cast the vote before the end of the election tomorrow. When the winner is revealed, they will also show who voted for whom. Each ballot counts for 90 votes, so they should take some time to think before they vote. While dressing for the salon, Kanoko thinks about how Sumika turned out to be someone who interferes, so she doesn't care about her anymore. She only wants to win back her place next to Haim. With Haim dropping out and Sumika not being reliable, Mitsuki is getting closer to becoming Bloom. Kanoko wonders why this Bloom election even exists. There's no need to change anything. Haim proudly tells the guests she's voting for Mitsuki and that everyone else should support her too. If they do, they can be Bloom Schwestern. Mitsuki mentions Haim is making it sound as though she's only doing this because she wants to become Bloom Schwestern, but she says she wants to achieve this with her older sister. Kanoko finds their encounters hard to watch as she sees how Haim's personality is changing. Two guests interrupt her brainstorming to say they are on her side. Her words of support for Sumika the other day were so sincere. They hope Sumika becomes Bloom. Kanoko just silently walks away because that's not how she feels about Sumika anymore. In that moment, Sumika steps in to excuse Kanoko, saying she struggles to speak casually to visitors. She's also extra sensitive now because of the Bloom election. Sumika believes Kanoko won't open up to anyone other than the salon workers. A guest believes that nonsense and praises them, saying it's wonderful how they can communicate without words. Kanoko ignores the scene and asks Haim if she's okay and if she needs help. Sumika steps in again to say she's trying to live up to her expectations. Kanoko gives her an angered stare, but Sumika goes on to say the elections are almost over, so she should try to relax a little. They've done everything they could. Haim suspects something is wrong. Later in the dressing room, Haim tells Kanoko she seems gloomy since the other day and she suddenly can't talk to Sumika again. Kanoko says it's nothing. She never used to talk to her, and there's no need for her to. Haim disagrees. She supported Sumika's bid for Bloom. Kanoko has had enough with this Bloom stuff. She doesn't support Sumika either. Haim raises her voice to say Kanoko must learn to talk to people other than her. Kanoko explains that's not the case. Sumika is trying to interfere with their relationship, so there's no need to talk to her anymore. She's also not as good a person as she thought. It was all a misunderstanding. Haim moves the curtains to confront Kanoko face on. She asks what on earth happened between her and Sumika. Kanoko has to tell her, otherwise, she can't know. Sumika tries to make Kanoko give up on Haim, 
but she can't say that to her because that would reveal Kanoko's true feelings for her. Kanoko has no idea what she should say and frustratedly calls Haim Abaka. She apologizes right after, telling Haim she did nothing wrong. It was a mistake. Haim closes the curtains and apologizes for trying to force her. Kanoko heads home, but Haim stays, as she's still reading a book. Sumika enters the room and is shocked to see Kanoko tearing up. She tries to stop her, only for Kanoko to move her hand off her, asking Sumika to leave her alone. She's not doing anything. In the salon, Nene asks Sumika what's with her worried face. Sumika is happy to see Nene trying to cheer her up, but Nene explains that's not the case. It's Sumika who takes care of the trouble that happens in the salon. Sumika asks if she thinks there's trouble. Nene suspects there was something bad going on with her and Kanoko. She hears stuff when she's in the kitchen. Sumika explains she's trying to stop Kanoko from bringing romance into the salon. This time, she won't fail and let the salon get destroyed. She wants Kanoko to give up on her love, but she just won't. Kanoko said there's nothing to stop. She's not going to confess or anything, and she just wants things to stay the same. What did she even want to stop? Kanoko isn't trying to break anything anymore. Sumika then asks Nene why did she go for Goedo back then despite her advice and sacrificed their sisterhood for romance. It is revealed that Nene was the salon worker back in the day, then known as Sayanji. Nene understands Sumika is coming from a place of compassion, but it's unwelcome. At least for her, when she falls in love, it's her choice. She doesn't want people telling her what to do. Getting dumped and crying is all part of romance. Nene thinks it's the same with Kanoko, if she knows what she's getting into, nobody has a right to stop her. She suggests to Sumika she should channel that unwelcome compassion into something other than trying to stop her. Kanoko is no longer someone trying to break things, she's now someone who's going to cry. Sumika agrees with that logic. Salon workers cast their remaining votes, and so the Bloom election period is now over. The Bloom winner will be revealed at the salon tomorrow. As the students tally the final votes for the Bloom election, Sumika thinks she might not need to stop Kanoko from making advances to Haim, as she's not trying to break anything anymore. Mai shows the results to Sumika and Mitsuki, revealing that Sumika won. Mai remarks that the outcome isn't very surprising. Sumika goes to inform the other two of the results. Haim congratulates her, while Kanoko remains silent. Haim thinks it's too bad Mitsuki got overtaken. Maybe if she had started supporting her earlier, Mitsuki would have won. Sumika wants to talk to Kanoko alone about all of this. Haim says it doesn't need to be today, as Kanoko doesn't seem comfortable. Sumika says that she doesn't want to make her even more uncomfortable but would like to apologize for the things she said the other day. She wants Kanoko to forget she even said anything and acknowledges she was wrong to ask her to give up. Sumika hopes they'll be back on friendly terms tomorrow. Confused by what this is all about, Haim asks what Sumika did to make Kanoko uncomfortable. In her opinion, Sumika is being a bit too one-sided, as Kanoko has been behaving strangely lately. Haim asks her to be a bit more friendly with Kanoko. Sumika thinks the cuteness of Haim might be why Kanoko fell in love with her. Sumika tells Haim that if she wants to be more friendly to Kanoko, they need to be alone. Haim knows Kanoko isn't comfortable with that and asks what Sumika even said to her. It's almost like she's threatening her. Kanoko panics and tells her to stop. Sumika apologizes again for being too forceful and tells Haim she's in the dark about a lot of things here, so she shouldn't blame Kanoko. Alone again, Haim asks Kanoko what she wants to do about all this, but Kanoko doesn't respond. Sumika thinks of how little it took for Kanoko to blush when Haim said they should be more friendly. As she leaves work, Kanoko is outside waiting for her and immediately asks if Sumika is saying she won't interfere anymore. Sumika instead focuses on the fact that Kanoko is talking to her again. She invites her to sit next to her, saying she will listen to anything, but Kanoko has had enough. She just wants Sumika to tell her what it is she wants to say. Sumika doesn't understand what Kanoko wants to do. Like she said, she's going to create a new bloom rule where you can't quit being sisters, so she's curious why Kanoko voted for her. Kanoko thinks this outcome is still better than Mitsuki becoming bloom. Pitt's wrong for Haim to support her. Kanoko is okay with Sumika's new rule if that's what matters to her. The only thing that matters to Kanoko is Haim. They should stay out of each other's way. Sumika points out Kanoko's jealousy when Haim was supporting Mitsuki. She asks her if she wants to continue being in love with someone but still hide things from them. Kanoko gets frustrated again. She doesn't want Sumika to interfere with anything she does. Sumika explains she wants to help her. She was watching her during the entire bloom period. 
she realized how much Kanoko loves Haim. She's always looking at her, jealous of the people around her. Every time she tried to stop that love of hers, she ended up making her cry. But Kanoko keeps saying she won't confess. She wants to hide that love from Haim too and stay friends, meaning she's stopping her own love by herself. Sumika's been told she doesn't understand romance, but if continuing to hide for Kanoko is too tough, she's the one who can lend an ear to Kanoko when she needs it. Kanoko sits next to her. She talks about how Sumika found out about her feelings for Haim and accepted that it was romance. Before trying to end it, she treated it as a real existing thing. So maybe, it's okay for her to tell more about how she feels about Haim. Sumika agrees, that's what she's been saying from the beginning. Kanoko opens up about Haim, saying she can never love a person, and Haim is her only friend. Sumika is confused, as it doesn't appear that way to her. The Haim she knows has many friends. Kanoko explains it's true that she's liked by many people, but she's just pretending to be friendly. It's even more true when it comes to romance. People confess to her all the time, but she turns them down and ends it there. Haim has zero interest in romance. It doesn't seem to Sumika that Haim is that cold, but Kanoko explains she never shows her true face. Everyone loves her for what they see, but Haim never loves anyone. Kanoko believes she's the only person who's special to Haim, which is why she'll never confess. She'll stay this way, as her friend. Nothing needs to change. Kanoko realizes she revealed Haim's precious secret. She asks Sumika not to tell anyone. Nobody can find out, not even Haim. Sumika won't tell anyone. She tells Kanoko they can trust each other more than that. Sumika wasn't going to make Kanoko give up anymore, but her love is just so fruitless. If what she said about Haim is true, she gets to stay by her side, but at the cost of hiding and repressing her love forever and never seeing it come true. Kanoko says she should have said not to bring romance to Salon to Mitsuki, she's the one who's in love with Haim. It's weird to Kanoko that she won't get turned down by Haim. Haim's been weird ever since Mitsuki appeared. Sumika thought that Haim's and Mitsuki's relationship was all an act, but it wasn't totally. She realizes where Kanoko's jealousy comes from. Kanoko wants to tell Mitsuki not to bring romance into Salon also, but it's too late for that. She suggests they refrain from taking any action. Sumika wishes to help Kanoko somehow, but Kanoko adds that there's nothing more she wants from her and thanks her for the talk. It helped her see better. She will continue to not say anything to Haim, and no matter how much time passes, that's how things will stay. She then remembers a long time ago when Haim told her, if you don't speak out, it's like it never happened. That makes Kanoko conflicted. Sumika says there is no point in holding it in if that makes her cry. Maybe she can't help her, but she won't let her cry alone. Sumika is the only one who knew about her love, yet she couldn't do anything for her until now. The next day, Haim announces to the guests that the winner of the Bloom election is Sumika. Sumika first thanks all of their support. She gains support not just from the visitors but the salon workers as well. She vows to perform dutifully as Bloom for the next year. She praises all the salon workers and tells them she'd like to continue working at the salon with all of them. People are surprised when Kanoko walks up to Sumika, who then asks her to become her Bloom Schwestern with her. Everyone congratulates them. Kanoko quietly tells her not to interfere. That's why she's become her sister. Sumika lets her know she's just a big sister she can cry with when she needs to. That's all. Haim turns to Kanoko and asks if things are okay now, if she made up with Sumika. Haim was afraid she was making her tag along with her and keeping her from making her own friends. Kanoko is just happy that Haim is happy. Sumika encourages everyone to get along together as salon workers so that, over the next year, not one of them goes missing. That is her new rule as Bloom. Haim says it's too bad Mitsuki didn't win, but she did her part in voting for her. Mitsuki knew she was going to vote for her. She's her little sister, after all. The next day, Haim explains to Kanoko that it's good to have one of the vests she's wearing for the summer uniform. It means you can adjust when it's cold too. Kanoko, however, doesn't think one of these suits her. Haim replies it will once she gets used to it. In order to achieve cuteness, you have to be confident. As soon as Haim opens the door, Mai welcomes them to the summer. Haim has no idea what that is. Mai explains, summer, is German for, summer. The bloom elections are over, and the trees have shifted from spring to summer colors. The students will change clothes as well. Lead Girls Academy's summer uniforms begin today. They are also bringing back the students' tea recommendations and the Schwester tea menu. She encourages them to all work together to make this a great summer. Mai is overwhelmed by the cuteness of their new uniforms. 
She's glad she designed this with cuteness in mind. Haim thinks this feels like it came out of a manga, or rather a cosplay event. But she then remembers that was true for the other uniform too. They were only wearing winter uniforms until now. So Mai is so glad that they could fulfill her dream of a summer uniform. The last one to get dressed up is Mitsuki. When she comes out of the dressing room, the other four are astounded to see her melons are even more exposed with this outfit. Sumika asks if she's okay with this outfit, to which Mitsuki responds she likes it a lot. Sumika then asks Mai if it's okay to let her work in the salon like that, and Mai is not totally sure. She wants to avoid going too sexy, but it's a close call. Haim's face becomes red when she sees Mitsuki like that. She thinks Mitsuki looks extra stacked, and that her melons seem even bigger than before. Haim used to be just a bit taller than her. She looks down and sees her growth hasn't been nearly as great. Mai also asks Mitsuki if she's sure that it will be alright, she doesn't have to push herself too hard. After a bit of confusion, Mai further explains that Mitsuki wearing that summer uniform looks a bit too sexy. Mitsuki says there's nothing to worry about, she's a second year, so it's not inappropriate, given her character. She's more concerned about ruining the summer uniform just for her to look less sexy, it's such a cute design. Haim is surprised by her priorities. Mai says there's no problem then, however, Haim interrupts to ask what will other people think when they see her like that. Mitsuki walks to Haim to ask if she thinks this looks bad on her. Haim is too distracted by her melons to say anything to her face. Embarrassed, Haim says it doesn't look bad, she just wants her to think about the customers. In the salon, Sumika announces they will be wearing new uniforms. It feels better than she expected, welcoming changes as the bloom. One guest asks if she is happy to be the bloom. She replies what she's most happy about isn't being the bloom, this honor was granted to her by Kanoko. The fact that she's decided to become her sister and their relationship they built together, that is what makes her most happy. She asks everyone to look at her lovely little sister. Kanoko whispers she's not going to participate in this type of thing. Sumika wants her to just leave it all up to her. Elsewhere, Haim is still distracted from her work by Mitsuki's melons. The guests notice how inappropriate the outfit looks on her as they blush. Haim sees that everyone is staring at Mitsuki, which concerns her. Haim tries to hide her so they can't see her. She even takes orders from customers so that Mitsuki doesn't have to. Mitsuki suddenly embraces her from behind. She is just glad to be able to stand in the salon with Haim wearing the same cute uniform. Sumika asks her if they could talk and thanks Haim for hiding her. Inside, Mitsuki becomes frustrated after she's continuously told to cover her outfit so that it looks less lewd. Sumika explains that even if she thinks it's okay, some people will see it as inappropriate. When Haim walks into the room, Mitsuki asks if she feels the same, if she's lewd and needs to cover up. Haim thinks to herself there was nothing else she could do, it was too lewd, so she didn't want others to see. In the next moment, Mitsuki appears let down after being forced to wear a sweater. Haim encourages her they should work together as always. Sumika instead focuses on how good her summer uniform looks on them. She didn't realize how indecent she looked until it was pointed out to her for which she's ashamed. Haim tells her there is nothing to be ashamed of. She's very mature and beautiful. In fact, she has a hard time trying not to stare at her, which isn't her fault either. Mitsuki suddenly takes her sweater off which shocks Haim. She thanks Haim for these words and gives her a big hug. Later after work, Mai got Mitsuki a shirt which is more fitting for the outfit and still covers her melons. Mai mentions this was Haim's idea to make Mitsuki less ashamed. Mitsuki confronts Haim, telling her she said earlier there's no need for her to be ashamed. Haim reveals the truth which is she was jealous of Mitsuki's body. This embarrasses Mitsuki. The next day, Nene serves all the salon workers a cup of tea. Mai explains that this is the student's recommended tea. They should all learn the taste well as it's meant to be their personal recommendation. They should be able to explain the type of tea it is, what they like about it, the recommended way of drinking it, and so on. Haim thinks it just tastes like normal tea. Next, they have two Schwester teas. This is supposed to be a joint recommendation by the two sisters. Again, Haim thinks this tea is nothing special. Mai chose each tea based on their characters. Everyone describes what their tea tastes like. Mitsuki's, Mondro's, has a classy taste with apricot and rose scents. Sumika's tea has a wine flavor. Kanoko's tea has a sweet apple scent. Haim doesn't know what to say about hers, so instead, she just focuses on how wonderful tea is. They can enjoy it together with elegance. Mai thinks that's cute and all, but that's her opinion on tea in general. She should be more specific about it so that her fans will want to order it. Haim just says she will work on that. 
Mitsuki scolds her she can't stay ignorant forever. They are working at a cafe, so explaining the menu is part of the job. Mai agrees. This is important work stuff. Thanks to everyone, the cafe is doing very well recently. The return of tea recommendations and the introduction of summer uniforms are just examples of the many business expansions she has in mind. So, in order to make sure everyone can do the work, she wants their work power to improve. She singles out Haim specifically, telling her to improve her work power. She's still a little unreliable the way she is. She might be more cute and elegant than Mai, but if we say Haim's work power is at 10, Mai's is at 100. Haim is terrified. She's asked again to work on raising her work power through the recommended teas. Sumika reassures her they will support her. Haim feels like everyone is underestimating her. In the salon, everyone seems to do a good job of explaining their tea in detail to the customers. Now it's Haim's turn. Her tea, Engel, means angel. She simply says it tastes good. When asked what she likes about it, she tells them she has a hard time expressing it. So if they could try it and teach her how to explain. Her Oni-sama will scold her if she can't explain it well. The customers order it purely based on Haim's cuteness. Haim is convinced her facade can get her through almost anything. That is her own special work power. When the customers are done drinking the angle, they say it was delicious. One guy says he appreciates the scent of raspberry, so maybe Haim should recommend that. Another guest thinks it was the taste of strawberry. This sparks an argument between the two. They ask Haim which was it, but Haim has no idea. Mitsuki steps in to say they are both correct. Raspberry, strawberry, and lemon are all flavors included in Haim's angle. It's a sweet, gentle tea, giving them the image of a warm sunny day. She encourages Haim to try to refrain from using her tea as a quiz game. In the kitchen, Mitsuki scolds Haim. She should memorize her tea now. She can't keep relying on customers. There's so much more for her to learn. Haim thanks her for the help. Mitsuki learned her tea too. Mitsuki says that's just her job as the elder sister, but Haim remembers she said that when she helped her before too. When she couldn't get the order, she had it all written down. It's been that way ever since they first became sisters. Mitsuki has been watching Haim and making sure she doesn't fail. It makes Haim happy that their sisterhood is important to Mitsuki. She asks Mitsuki if she kind of loves her. Mitsuki blushes and says not to get the wrong idea. She's just helping her because she's her sister. Haim should learn the work already if she feels like she's always getting helped. Haim thinks Mitsuki is always too focused on work. She thought they just got back on good terms. In the salon, Haim thanks Mitsuki for teaching her about her tea. It's the tea she chose for her, so she has to learn it properly. Mitsuki is confused as Mai is the one who chose the tea. Haim plays the character of being a clueless sister so that her older sister has to take care of her. Mitsuki tells her that a salon worker being ill-versed in tea is nothing to be proud of. Haim reminds her she always helps her prepare the tea, which means she must really love her. Mitsuki has enough of this as it's making her blush again. She whispers to Haim she doesn't love her at all, and she shouldn't get the wrong idea. The anime ends as Haim and Mitsuki play piano together like in the old days. The two sisters who've known each other since grade school now work together at Lieb Girls Academy as friends. If you enjoyed this recap, make sure to check out the next one on your screen. And don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Goodbye.